other big story of yesterday, of course, was the um, hearing that took place, the Supreme Court hearing about the Tennessee case of whether or not minors should have access to gender affirming care. Oh my this God. is and, and we talked about Chase Strangio or whatever that weird ass person afraid Strangio. of male. Chase Strangio. Is, Right. Yes. Who's mm -hmm. fighting on behalf of the minor kids saying, oh, yeah, we should absolutely chop off their genitals and give them drugs. Um, and so this is a very, very interesting Supreme Court case. Um, all the news stations were covering it. There was CNN who had a very interesting little panel of people, including a 10 year old trans child. And they asked that child, well, what it what are you most afraid of when it comes to the Supreme Court potentially saying you don't get access to this care? This is the most disgusting exploitation of a child ever. Watch. What have you had about speaking out? That I'm going to be like murdered. Like one day I'm going to be walking down the street and somebody's going to come up and like shoot me or something. Oh, my God. That's a really scary thing to be worrying about at 10 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that should not be a worry. And yeah. your parents are doing that to you. Right. That's not something she came up with on her own. No. Oh, my God. That made me so sick to my yeah, stomach. It should. it should make everybody sick to their stomach. But liberals are like, no, that's fine. That's <laughs> totally fine. You should totally teach her that. Oh, my God. That is <laughs> abuse. Yes. That's child abuse. Yes. And there were all kinds of people outside the Supreme Court protesting. There were a lot of speakers on behalf of normalcy. Uh, Matt Walsh from The Daily Wire was out there. Um, th tons of speakers. Chloe Cole was out there. Lots and lots of speakers saying, this is absolutely crazy that this is even a thing. We're not going to stop fighting to protect kids. But then there were also the crazy protesters. And Nancy Mace uh, was out there giving her perspective about the crazies. Being outside the Supreme Court, you can see... Right behind me, you can see the lunatic protesters there. The Supreme Court is hearing a case today about Tennessee and, quote, gender-affirming care. Whatever the f*** that is. <laughs> Actually, that's child abuse, as all of us know. They want to pump right. our kids full of hormones and have devastating consequences to it. Our kids are not your hamsters. They're not guinea pigs. They're not to be experimented on um, and... They shouldn't be pumped up or overdosed with hormones. I mean, that's what we're talking about today. It's disgusting. It's going to do permanent damage to these children. And they don't need it. And they shouldn't have it. It shouldn't be paid for by the government either. It's nonsense. And these people are raging lunatics. They are. <laughs> they are absolute my, lunatics. That's my representative, man. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it great? I know. I love her. <laughs> I totally love her. Uh -huh. um, and then Chloe Cole, who you guys may know of, she is a detransitioner um, who's very outspoken about her experience and how damaging it is um, to have gender affirming care for kids. She talked about her speech um, at, in front of the Supreme Court. She was on a new show kind of giving a quick rundown. And I thought she summarized what's going on. Beautiful. Children, they can't consent to things like sex or buying alcohol or cigarettes. They can't vote. They can't enter into legally binding contracts under the age of 18. So to allow them to make a decision that will affect not only the entire course of the development physically, psychologically and reproductively is completely ridiculous. Yeah, it is. Why? I mean, this seems like common sense to me. Yes. You can't get a tattoo, but you can do this and determine like the course of your like whole your whole physical life. It, it, that's okay. What? Uh, it, what are a, we doing? I know. It's absolutely insane that this is even a thing that's being argued in front of the Supreme Court. And yet it is. And as you might expect, we're probably not going to get a decision about it until closer to June, um, because that's how long they have to deliberate, even though they'll probably know how they're going to come down on this way earlier than that. We may not know how this goes until June. But as you might expect, based on some of the sound that came out of the hearing yesterday, the um, liberal justices, Sotomayor, Kagan, uh, Katanji Brown-Jackson, who, of course, I'm named after today, they are crazy. They're, they're absolutely crazy. Yeah, Their takes are, are crazy. Yep. Um, and so you're going to hear a little bit of the, the first clip you're going to hear is of Sotomayor, who is actually trying to suggest that the gender affirming care, all the hormones that they want to pump into these kids, 
has risks. That's just like when you take aspirin, you guys. Oh the risk of thing. detransitioners. So it, it becomes a pure exercise of, of weighing benefits versus risk. And the question of how many minors have to have their bodies irreparably harmed for unproven benefits is one that is best left. I'm sorry, safety. Counselor. Every medical treatment has a risk, even taking oh aspirin. Um, <laughs> there is always going to be a percentage of the population under any medical treatment mm -hmm. that's going to suffer a harm. Yeah, aspirin, aspirin has a 2,000 year history. I, with, I, I just can't. This, this whole puberty blocker thing, we've been like, you know, kind of like messing around with it since, I don't know, I mean, really technically since the 1990s, but really more since the 2000s is when people have been, because of all the social contagion mm -hmm. with transgenderism and all the kids, like with t the TikTok and whatnot. And they're like, oh, I'm a transgender. No, you're not. You're really not. But you think you are. And then your parents are enabling it because you live in San Francisco and there's a bunch right. of clinics that will do it and then and do this to you, which is basically... Child abuse is what it is. This is madness. I cannot believe she made a comparison between I aspirin know. and this. It's a little different, you <laughs> idiot. Spoken like a true a person without kids, by the way. Right, right. I, well, yeah. and, and the comparisons got even more ridiculous because Katanji Brown Jackson tried to say that this is just like when there was a ban on interracial marriage. I don't know how she got from point A to point B. You guys can listen and hear for yourselves. By the statute. That was sort of like the starting point. The question was whether it was discriminatory because it applied to both races and it wasn't you know, necessarily invidious or whatever. But, you know, as I read the statute here, the, uh, excuse me, the case here, um, you know, the court starts off by saying that Virginia is now one of 16 states which prohibit and punish marriages on the basis of racial classifications. And when you look at the structure of that law, it looks in terms of, you know, you can't do something that is inconsistent with your own characteristics. It's sort of the same thing. So it's interesting to me that we now have this different argument. And I wonder whether Virginia could have gotten away with what they did here by just making a classification argument the way uh, that Tennessee is in this case. That yeah. Hey, Katanji, what is a woman? <laughs> yeah, she can't oh, answer yeah, that she, question. She has trouble with that one. That's, yeah. a, that's a tough one for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's tough for her, too, to understand basic things like the fact that testosterone affects girls differently than it affects boys. She has a real struggle with this one. The Tennessee Solicitor General tries to explain to her how testosterone works. It's on the body in the same way. So what, what's your basis for saying they're I, not the same? I don't think it operates on the, on the body in the same way. Take testosterone. If you give a boy with a deficiency testosterone could be because he has constitutional delayed puberty, that allows him to go through uh, the, the, uh, and develop the reproductive organs associated with being a male. If you give it to a girl, it renders the girl infertile. So we have yeah. eight to 12 year olds. Oh, being I'm passed. sorry. I thought your reasons for them being different was that you said they were for different purposes. I'd heard you say at the beginning, the reason those two are different is because one wants them to transition and the other wants them for some medical purpose. Well, to go back to my, my oh example my God. In, the, in the introduction, I don't think anyone would say using morphine to assist suicide is the same treatment as using morphine to manage pain. It's the same drug, just like it's the same drug here, but they're being used for fundamentally different purposes. They have different effects on the body. Right. And once you take out and you recognize medical reality, then there is no argument that our law differentiates between treatments for males and females. I mean, she's heard of different indications for different drugs, right? You like, would think. It, why is she, why is she <laughs> stupid? <laughs> What, how did these people make it on the Supreme court? I don't, this is what I'm like yesterday. I was just baffled by that. Right. Like there's that much stupidity on our Supreme court. It's pretty terrifying actually. Good Lord.
And then there was the moment that was so uh, um, amazing with Sam Alito questioning Chase Strangio about whether or not transgenderism is in fact immutable. Um, and so this was really, really interesting because they get themselves into a big pickle when they factor in the non-binary nonsense into the umbrella under T, the transgender T, because if you are able to just change your mind willy nilly from not just day to day, but hour to hour or even minute to minute, then you cannot say this is something you can't help, that this right. is a, something like your race, which you cannot change. You actually are saying just the opposite. And Alito kind of caught him out on this, which was really this. Was I love something. it. Every respect. But on paper. Actually, before we even get to that, there's a clip of Alito talking about whether or not there are true studies that show that gender affirming care prevents suicides in the uh, trans people who get the care versus people who don't, okay. because there actually has not been any significant studies which suggest that gender affirming care prevents suicide. Yeah, but Chase though, tries. Yeah, they want because liberals want you to think that there are. Yeah, they say yeah. that this is they either get the care or they take they their commit own lives. Suicide. Yeah. And that's that's just not borne out in the stats. And so the first clip is about that. The second one is about the immutable characteristics. We'll just let them play together. D5 of the cast report, it says there is no evidence that gender affirmative treatments uh, reduce suicide. What I think that is referring to is there is no evidence in some in the studies that this treatment reduces completed suicide. And the reason for that is com completed suicide, thankfully and admittedly, is, is rare. And we're talking about a very small population of individuals with studies that don't necessarily have completed suicides within them. However, there are multiple studies, long-term longitudinal studies that do show that uh, there is a reduction in, in suicidality, which I, I, I think is a, is a positive outcome to this treatment. As the category of uh, uh, does transgender status apply to individuals who are gender fluid? I think that the, the distinguishing characteristic is to have a birth sex that does not align with, uh, or a gender that does not align with one's uh, birth sex. So it, it may include people who have different understandings of, of their gender identity, but I think it is still the distinguishing characteristic of a birth sex and a gender identity that are incongruent. Are there individuals who uh, are born male, assigned male at birth, who at one point uh, identify as female, but then later uh, come to identify as male, and likewise for individuals who are assigned female at birth, at some point identify as, ma as female, uh, I'm sorry, uh, identify as male, but later come to identify as female? Are there not such people? There are such people. I agree with that, Justin. So it's not an immutable characteristic. It's not. Bam. It's not an immutable characteristic. Bam.